In this new nine-part series that will run through the remainder of 2021, we will focus in on a topic that is often ignored but is critically important, that of rare diseases. In total, affect about 300 million people globally, including one in 11 Americans and over 30 million people in Europe. Our discussion today will be intentionally broad as we introduce you to the most critical challenges for patients, doctors and families facing rare diseases. The impact of a rare disease is very much linked to the rarity, which means that there is, generally speaking, a lack of understanding, a lack of knowledge, a lack of expertise, and it's really the impact on people's life that are uh, of most interest to us. So there are a lot of different types of rare diseases, and there are also many different causes of rare diseases. Um, the majority are thought to be genetic, and these are directly caused by changes in the genes of the chromosomes. In some cases, genetic changes that cause the diseases, are they come from one generation to the next, but some are spontaneous, so you don't know if and when all of a sudden you have a child with rare disease or you yourself develop a rare disease. It can come out of the blue. And, and I think that's sometimes those are the cases that are the hardest to identify and diagnose. In other cases, they, you know, it can just be random. Um, many rare diseases include infections. Some are cancers. Some are related to autoimmune diseases that aren't inherited. And every day we're looking for more causes and different ways to understand, you know, where these disorders are coming from and what causes them. I think there's government-sponsored science like the NIH to investigators at individual academic centers. There's a lot of rare disease research hiding in plain sight because people are looking at a particular pathway, a particular thing, right. and they use rare disease as a model for that. It's not always, I'm going to find these patients to study that. It's sometimes something else that's going on. And then linking that is what's important. Um, from a uh, international, there's there's a lot of funding in other countries that, that are done. Uh, there's also an increasing amount of funding from the biomedical and biopharmaceutical industry. And there's a reason for that. Um, it's an incredibly lucrative industry that's made a lot of money and they have found that it is in fact profitable to make drugs for rare diseases because they're able to charge a good amount of money in a variety of countries to make it back. And there is a market people want we, we need, we're desperate need for proper treatments in rare diseases. We can talk about the economics of this and the fairness of this, but the fact is it has driven research that's being done in these rare diseases. And I think it's important to remember research in rare diseases can have benefit for many common diseases and vice versa. The other thing is that we're missing a lot of rare diseases because we're not looking at it. Most of the work has been done in North America, Western Europe rare diseases in Africa, rare diseases in Asia, rare diseases in Latin America, we're missing many of those because nobody's looking at them. So we also have patients who are saying, what about us? So I think, you know, as researchers, as patient advocates, as, you know, whatever we're trying to do here, we, I think, are being increasingly pressed to say, talk about the equity in terms of uh, identifying working with rare diseases. We have rare, rare and neglected, neglected rare diseases, even among the rare diseases. Mm -hmm. 